Coming up on the bench, SU travels to Chestnut Hill to take on Boston College. The Orange will be looking to extend their winning streak to five games after winning four straight in the Carrier Dome. See how the Orange fared against the Golden Eagles, a team that has lost 11 of their last ACC games. The men's lacrosse team was in action as well. SU traveled to Durham, North Carolina to take on the Duke Blue Devils in their second ACC game of the season. The two rivals meet for the first time since the Orange squeezed out a one-goal victory over the Blue Devils in the 2015 ACC Championship game. The women's lax team had a big game as well. SU hosted North Carolina in a one-goal thriller. Find out who won along with everything else you need to know in the world of SU sports starting right now. Thanks for joining us inside the Citrus TV studios for On the Bench Tryout Edition. Alongside Taylor Lang and Eric Simon, I'm Luke McGrath. Guys, we have a great show ahead of us for uh, all things from SU men's basketball highlights to men's lacrosse highlights, and uh, there was a women's lacrosse game as well. But we'll get things started first with a, a recap of the men's basketball game when they traveled to Chestnut Hill to take on the Boston College Golden Eagles. First things first, Tyler Lydon is warming up and he would have a big game for the Orange, but Malachi Richardson got things started for the Orange. He knocked down the first field goal, a three-pointer that ties the game at 4-4 early in the first quarter. Syracuse would jump out to an early lead. Boston College would hang around, however. Matt Millen would have a big game for BC. He knocks down his first of five threes here. But then SU keeps things under control as Frank Howard finds Tyler Lydon for the smooth alley-oop. Matt Millen refused to go away, however, he scored this layup to cut the deficit to just one point, nearing the end of the first half. Second half now, SU falls behind by one as Dennis Clifford finds his own rebound and puts it away while drawing a foul. SU would respond quickly, however, Tyler Lydon would get this three-pointer in transition to put the orange up 60-45 to midway through the second half. And Mike Benajay wanted to get on the three-point barrage as well. He drained one of his own to put the game on ice. SU takes care of business, 75-61. to 61. The Orange captured their uh, fifth straight win, much in part to the work of the freshman duo of Tyler Lydon and Malachi Richardson, who combined for 35 points. Richardson had 15 points, while Lydon added 20, a career high for him. Although the Orange led by just three at the end of the first half, SU came alive after falling behind early in the second half, going on a 21-4 run to open up a 15-point lead. SU shot 8 for 10 from behind the arc in the second half and held BC to 5 for 12 in from 3 in uh, from three point land. Excuse me. Up next for the Orange is a trip to Louisville against Rick Pitino's squad. Guys, good stuff from SU as they take down BC. Now let's take a look at how the men's lacrosse team did when they traveled to take on Duke. Koskinen Stadium is where it would all go down. These two ACC rivals came into the game both ranked in the top 10. In the second quarter, it's Duke's Demir Class who takes it to the cage unassisted. SU would lead 7-4. SU would take an 11-6 lead into the half as Joe Gillis rips this shot with just 7 sec seconds left to play in the first half. But Duke would fight back. Demir Class again scores to cut the SU lead to 3 with minutes to play in the third quarter. Fourth quarter now, Class again just terrorizing the SU defense. He would have seven goals on the game. Yes, I said seven goals on the game. SU finds themselves down by one until SU's Derek DeJoe would find the back of the net here, tying the game at 15 with just about three and a half minutes left to play, and we would need overtime to decide a winner. But SU fans would not go home happy as Chad Cohen buries this game winner as he rolls to the net and beats Warren Hill with a, nef a nifty move. Final score, 16-5 to in overtime. That's SU's second straight loss after falling first to Johns Hopkins, also in overtime. Guys, what do you think went wrong for SU here? I think a lot of it had to do with the scoring, you know, and the defense, and really just not taking advantage of extending the lead and playing a little too confidently. Absolutely. Certainly a few things to work on for the Orange. They will look to bounce back when they host Notre Dame in the Carrier Dome this Saturday in a game that will celebrate the program's 100th anniversary. The men were not the only lax team in action. Head coach Gary Gate and the rest of the women's lacrosse team hosted North Carolina in the Carrier Dome. Just like the men, SU suffers a one goal defeat against an ACC rival. This time it was the Tar Heels. They scored five of the, the game's last six goals to record the one goal win. 
Interestingly enough, there were no goals in the last 10 minutes of this game as the Tar Heels went into cruise control and dominated possession for the remainder of the contest. SU now is now 12-4 and, and will go to Ithaca next Tuesday to take on Cornell. Welcome back inside the Citrus TV studios along with Taylor Lang and Eric Simon. I'm Luke McGrath. We're going to move now to SU men's basketball with one of my favorite games, the Fast Break. All right, guys, welcome to the Fast Break. The rules are pretty simple. I'm going to ask you a question. If you agree with what I'm going to say, you're going to dunk it. If you disagree, you're going to dish it away. First question, Eric. Will Andrew White finish the season as Syracuse's leading scorer? I'm going to dunk that. I think there's no doubt. You know, Syracuse lost three of their top scorers from last year. They lost Cooney, they lost Malachi, and, you know, they lost Banjay. So Andrew White comes in. He averaged 16.6 points per game for uh, Nebraska in a very competitive Big Ten. I don't think there's a doubt in my mind. They definitely, he definitely scores and leads the team. Okay, and Taylor, are you going to dish or dunk that? I'm going to dunk it too. I totally agree. I think he's got the most minutes. He's got the most shots. I think there's a very slim chance that anyone's going to pass him. Certainly some high expectations for Andrew White this season. Next question, guys. Taylor, we'll start with you. Do you think Frank Howard will average more playing time than John Gillen this season? Dunk. I think Howard knows the system. He's been here for a year, and Gillen has experience. Um, but I don't think it's the same level as the ACC. All right, Eric, you dishing or dunking? Uh, I think I have to dish this one, and the reason I say that is you look at John Gillen, he pretty much came here expecting to start, and he started last year for Colorado State and had a very good season for them, averaged just about over 30 minutes a game. I think he's definitely going to start over Franklin Howard. All right, and finally, one last question. Now, SU made it to the Final Four last season as a 10 seed, but my question to you, uh, Eric, do you think they'll do it again, dish or dunk? I have to dish this one. You know, usually... You know, last year was magical, nothing short of a miracle, and I just don't see, I see them doing well, I see them competing in the ACC the entire year, but I don't see another Final Four in the future for the Syracuse Orange. Taylor, how about you? Unfortunately, I have to cook it, plate it, and dish it out. I think that miracles can happen, uh, but Cuse hasn't been able to come up big against any Power 5 teams, and I just, I don't think it's going to happen. Well, Syracuse certainly has some haters to prove wrong, but that just about does it for us in this edition of the Citrus TV tryout. For Taylor Lang and Eric Simon, I'm Luke McGrath. Thanks so much for watching. Well, welcome back, guys. I got a few questions for you guys. And if you guys like it, I want you to dunk it. And if you don't like it, I want you guys to dish it. Pretty simple as it gets. First question I have for you guys, Andrew White, will he finish this year as a team's league scorer? Eric, I'm going to have to dunk that. Um, I personally believe that Tyler Lydon is the best player on this team, but Andrew White's averaging about almost four points more per game than him, and I think the, the reason I, I dunk this is because I think Andrew White, he's one shot short of having twice as many attempts as uh, Tyler Lydon, and uh, with Tyler Lydon being on the Naismith watch list this season, I think he'll be the main focus for team's defenses, which I think will allow for Andrew White to be the leading scorer. See, I'm going to have to disagree with you. I'm going to have to dish it. I think that while White is the leading scorer now, I think Tyler Lydon's been a strong player all around, and I think he's just going to be able to cash in big plays in the paint. Now, my next question for you guys, Franklin Howard, sophomore coming in, will he average more minutes than John Gillen? I think he's been here for a year. He knows the system. I think that while Gillen has experience, uh, it's not the same as being in the ACC and knowing what to expect. Yeah, Taylor, I'm going to kind of agree with you. I'm going to give this one a layup. I don't think we're going to dunk <laughs> it on this fast break. Through six games, Gillen has played five minutes more than Frank, but I think that has to do with uh, a couple of those early games were kind of some more garbage time minutes that I think he got. And the reason I think Frank Howard is going to get a slight advantage is he ha averages a few more assists less turnovers and more steals. But what I think it's really going to come down to is who's got the hot hand per game. I think Jim Beheim is pretty even on how he looks at both of these players, and I think he's really just going to go with whoever has the hot hand every game. And my final question for you guys, we all remember last year's Finals Four run. Remarkable, incredible. This time Beheim comes in with a team he says one of the best he's had coming into a season. Do you think there's another Final Four this year for Syracuse? Oh, Eric, I think that's going to be a windmill dunk for me. I know <laughs> SU hasn't looked that sharp so far this season, but the way I look at it is there's, they're rotating nine players, but five of these players aren't really used to this system. Pascal Chukwu, a, pro, uh, a transfer, he was ineligible to play last year, along with other transfers, including Andrew White and John Gillen, and freshman Tristan, uh, Torian Thompson, excuse me, 
and uh, Tyus Battle. So I think there's just a lot of adjustments that need to be made. I don't think the team's quite gelled yet, but I think come March, this is going to be a team that can play with just about anybody, and I see them making it back to the Final Four. I'm going to dish it, not just any dish, but lobster, lobster. And I think miracles can happen, but I think logic has nothing to do with it. And it didn't have anything to do with it last year, and we just kind of got lucky, and we'll take it, and Bayheim will take it too. Uh, but I think we got to go. We got to do it. Well, guys, that's all the time we have today. Thanks once again, my analyst, Luke McGrath, Taylor Lang. I'm Eric Simon. Stay classy. Welcome inside the fast break. All right, guys, this is how it's going to work. I'm going to dish out a statement. If you like it, you're going to dunk it. If you don't like it, you're going to dish it. First one, Andrew White coming off as a transfer from Nebraska last season. He's now playing with the Orange. Andrew White will lead this team in scoring by season's end. Uh, I'm going to have to dunk that. And you look at Andrew White averaging 16.6 points in just under 30 minutes a game. And that was against a very, very tough Big Ten. Now he's going to come into the ACC. Very competitive play, especially the ACC looking great, but he's their go-to guy now. I think he definitely leads the team in scoring. Yeah, Eric, I'm going to dunk that as well. I think um, I don't think he's particularly the best player on this team, but he's taking by far the most shots, and I think defenses are really honing in on what Tyler Lydon is doing this year, and I think uh, Syracuse will look to White to be their leading scorer. All right, now we're going to switch it over to the point guard spot. Guys, you got two players there, transfer John Gillen and sophomore Franklin Howard, both of them vying for time. Franklin Howard will play more minutes come season's end than John Gillen. You know, it, I go back and forth with this, and John Gillen came here thinking he's going to start, you know, start 30 minutes per game last year at Colorado State. I personally think that Franklin Howard, although he'll probably start off the year starting, I think Gillen will, as time goes, show that he's the better point guard and end up playing more minutes this season. Yeah, Eric, that's going to be a soft layup for me. I see these two being very close all season long. I think at the end of the day, Bayheim's just going to go with whoever has the hot hand. But if I had to pick, I'd pick Frank Howard simply because I think he turns the ball over slightly less, and I think his ability to shoot the three and his ability to get more steals will inevitably make him, uh, excuse me, make him have more minutes than Gillen. And finally, guys, a miracle run for the, the Syracuse Orange into the Final Four last season as a 10 seed. Syracuse will be able to repeat that and head to the Final Four in 2017. Uh, Nick, that's going to be a dunk for me, and I, I know they haven't looked too sharp so far this season. A couple of shaky wins and tough losses to both South Carolina and Wisconsin, but the way I look at it is they're rotating nine players this year, and I think five of them are new to this system. Pascal Chukwu is a transfer who was here last year but ineligible, and with transfers, uh, excuse me, with transfers um, like John Gillen and Andrew White and freshman Tyus Battle and Torian Thompson. I think there's just a lot of gelling that needs to be done and it's early in the season. But I think come March, this team will be uh, able to compete with just about anybody. You know, I would love to say yes to this, but I just don't see it happening. Syracuse, although coming in with what Jim Beheim said, one of the best squads he's ever seen. You know, there's so much talent out there with Villanova, Kentucky, and you know, Duke. They have two of the best freshman classes I've seen in quite some time. I think there's two Syracuse will compete, maybe in the Elite Eight, Sweet 16 run, but another Final Four, unless, you know, there's a little bit more magic in the pot, I don't see it happening. All right, well, that's all the time we have here in the Citrus TV studios. For Eric Simon, Luke McGrath, I'm Nick Dugan. Have a great night.